Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 298, and we are closing in on episode 300. And I do want to give you guys an update about that. I think what I'm going to do in that episode is that is, uh, in the next episode, in 299, I'm going to read through, your, like, your reviews. Like, I know I'm really late on that. A lot of you guys had your, you know, reviews of Venom that you put in the comment section on my Venom review. So if you haven't done that yet and you want to go do that, please do. I probably won't be able to get through all of them, but my plan is to make a one-hour video where I'm reading some of your reviews and then commenting, you know, responding back to them um, and, uh, you know, and saying kind of like, you know, having our version of a discussion since I don't really do a lot of live streams and stuff. And uh, and so that will be coming up in the next episode, 299, and I'll probably record that tomorrow on Halloween Day. Uh, I have been very sick. I have my, um, you know, surgery coming up next week and I've been resting, but I've been working like like you wouldn't believe and sleeping a lot. Uh, I've had a, a weird bout of fatigue this past weekend. And so right when I got home, I would just collapse and I would sleep for like 12 hours and then get up, go to work the next day and then come home and do the same thing over again. It was like that for about four days in a row now. So I have not got anything done that I wanted to get done. And so I think tomorrow I'm going to try to use some of that opportunity to um, catch up on a few things for you guys, get that 299th video in there where I'm, you know, reading all your stuff and then try to figure out what I'm going to do for the three 300th episode and try to get that up on Sunday, the day before my surgery. So that's my plan right now. Uh, so bear with me as I try to get through all that. Um, and then also I will try to do one other bonus episode. I'm going to try to record, uh, probably I'll wait until Sunday to record it, uh, but it'll be the minus one episode of this. We're going to go back in time uh, to do this story called The Seed of Darkness. And it's a one-shot comic and back like a thing in 97 or 98, Marvel did this thing where they released a bunch of minus one issues. So issues that were like set before for issue one, you know, and some comics have like zero issues or half issues like X-Men did uh, and Spider-Man. And so this was like, all right, let's go back all these comics that currently have monthly books. Let's go back and tell an event or a story that took place before, you know, these characters became the characters we knew. And so like some of the Peter Parker stories went back to when he was a kid with Uncle Ben and told some stories there. So the Venom one actually goes back to journalist days with Eddie Brock and where he gets caught up in the story where there's like this big gooey monster thing. So uh, it's kind of neat and it's, it's kind of goofy at the same time, but a lot of fun. And so I'm going to try to record that on Sunday and set that to upload sometime during the week next week when I'm recuperating. Cause I am going to probably be in bed rest for at least two or three days. And then after that, I probably am not going to jump at the chance to make a video. Uh, but uh, I will want to, you know, find a way to interact with you guys. So maybe I'll use like Wednesday and Thursday or, or Thursday and Friday of next week to upload some of these videos. Uh, so you might see, you know, a couple days gap there, but, uh, but I'll try to get stuff up to you guys as soon as possible. And I'll try to schedule. I've never really done that uh, too much before. So I'll try to schedule um, you know, some episodes to go up while I'm, you know, on bed rest so that there's, you know, something out there. Uh, so the main reason I'm doing, I know some of you guys are like, Hey dude, don't worry about it. Take, you know, take a chill pill, uh, just relax. And, uh, you know, we'll be here when you get back. It's not so much just that. And for you guys, but it's also because, you know, once I upload a certain amount of videos a week, there's algorithms and things that YouTube kind of expects me to keep doing that. And I don't want things to dip on my channel. I want to keep seeing the channel grow. So it's just good for me, at least. It gives me a good peace of mind to know that there's still content out there. Even if people don't watch it, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get stuff out there and, and, uh, and give you guys an option to watch it if you want to or not. Um, so we have, we know, we'll have that stuff coming up and I'll try to figure out what to do for episode 300. But in episode 300, I'll probably show off like the tickets that you guys ate. Like I, I saved some of those pictures. Some of you guys are doing cool stuff for Halloween, like carving pumpkins. I think Embry did that and I, I want to give him and his daughter a proper shout out. So I'll do that in the upcoming episode as well. And, uh, and there's, you know, a couple other things that I want to, you know, kind of dedicate to you guys. Uh, you know, episode 299 will mostly be about you, but in episode 300, I want to maybe, you know, incorporate you guys even more in that episode too. And I'll, I'm trying to think of something, but it's, you know, <laughs> time is, you know, I don't have a lot of time to think of something. So I'm going to do the best I can with episode 300, but I, I want to say thank you. I mean, to make, make it this far, 300 episodes and for the movie to do this well financially, uh, is just outstanding. And that is because of the core fan base and the people out there who are like the general fans who went, and saw this movie and gave it a chance. And, uh, and so I am very thankful because it's made a lot of people put their foot in their mouths, you know, and I know just because a movie made a lot of money doesn't make it a good movie. Of course, you know, we could argue that all day and I'm not going to argue that. I, I feel like the movie is okay. I gave it a seven out of 10. It could have been a lot better, uh, but to see it 
you know, with that much hate against it. I mean, you guys have to understand most movies that get this kind of hate, like The Mummy, you know, when that was coming out, it's going to be the beginning of a new shared universe. People were hating on that, you know, and now this, you know, and people were hating on this. And it's like the DC movies, what those get sometimes, the amount of hate those get. And those don't survive. You know, financially, a lot of those movies, uh, some of them did, you know, like Suicide Squad still made a ton of money. money and obviously Wonder Woman, that was well received. Um, but Justice League didn't, like that kind of sank. And so these movies, you know, they don't survive that kind of backlash usually. But Venom did. And I find that very awesome and it's uh, it's it's very unique that this kind of happens and so venom this past weekend uh it made a lot uh, i made another like 10 million dollars domestically here in the u.s it made another 10 million dollars and it put it over to 187 million dollars right, roughly it was 187 i think on monday and then it earned a little bit more um like 800 thousand uh you know monday uh, day as well so it put it up closer to 188 but it's at 187 uh, you know, one hundred eighty-seven million nine hundred thirty-seven thousand one hundred eighty-four dollars to be precise, as of right now. Um, but then also, uh, foreign-wise, it made uh, it's made total three hundred twenty-two million dollars. So it is really bringing in the money, and uh, and that brings its total up to five hundred and ten million dollars. And it hasn't even released in Japan or China yet. And it looks like Japan's going to be this coming weekend, uh, November second, and then China is going to be November 9th. And if you look at this article, which we're, I'm going to link down below, I'll put the box office mojo link down below so you can see the daily numbers. Uh, but the this article here from Scott Mendelson, who is definitely someone who has kind of been against this movie and has been one of the many people kind of trash talking it leading up to the movie, saying what a mistake it is, how it's not going to work. You know, I mean, he and he doesn't hide from that. I mean, that was his opinion. And he really <laughs> was out there, uh, you know, saying a lot of negative things. He said a few positive things, sure. Uh, but he mostly said a lot of negative things. And a lot of these guys did. But he's one of the few people that still went and wrote this article, and I'm sure it was not easy for him. And there's something about that, like someone who hated this movie and didn't want it to succeed, that it's actually financially succeeding. There's something really delicious about that. Uh, it's like, hey, man, good. You know, like, I'm glad this was a tough article for you to write on some level. You know, I don't wish the guy any ill will, obviously. He's just doing his job, and he's giving his opinion. That's what he's, you know, out there to do. He's a movie critic. Um, but uh, sometimes I think movie critics really try to to make something fail before it comes out and they all kind of echo each other and uh, and dogpile on stuff and it seems a little unfair to me um but you know what we live in an unfair world so you know it doesn't matter because you know an underdog underdog like venom still came out on top and he's still doing well and so he even admits in this he says yes the tom hardy michelle williams movie is a hit despite mediocre reviews and years of hand-wringing by folks like me <laughs> over the viability of a solo Venom movie without Spider-Man. Uh, so that's, I mean, you know, he admitted it, you know, and that's uh, that's pretty big of him, too. Uh, but he's, you know, has to write this article, too. So he's like, oh, look, I, I'm going to look like a hypocrite if I don't call myself out a little bit here. Uh, but the movie is doing really well, and if it... Uh, hits the numbers he breaks it down really well so i won't go over everything i'll put a link down below because I, I recommend you check it out I mean, some of you guys i know don't like this guy or whatever but uh, again i have nothing personal against the guy he's just doing his job and uh and you know it's he's if i made a show where i was like you know bashing movies and then the movie did well i would have to put my foot in my mouth too and that's kind of what he's doing here and um but he does break it down in an interesting way and he says that even he even posits that maybe this could be the most financial Spider-Man-ish movie uh, to ever come out of Sony because all the other Sony Spider-Man movies had, you know, 125, $150 million budgets and higher, uh, going up to $260 million uh, for the, uh, the Spider-Man 3 movie that had Venom in it the first time. And he talks about how much profit those movies made, even though they all neared like a billion dollars or some of them did, uh, the actual profit they made wasn't as big because the budgets were higher. Venom has a lower budget, but it still may end up around a 650 to $700 million marker uh, worldwide after all is said and done. And if it does that, that, that would make it the most profitable movie of the Spider-Man universe since the first one. Um, and that's insane like that's really insane so this is without a doubt a hit uh everyone out there you could hate the movie all you want you could you could hate the quality of it you can think it was bad the acting was bad you can say all that stuff and i'll agree on some of those points with you but what you can't uh, deny is that it is a financial success. It is a 
a huge hit for Sony. And, uh, and that also will just be, it's a hit now, but it'll be a bigger hit once we get those, uh, you know, Japan numbers and those China numbers. And he breaks down the possibility of what it could hit in China and Japan based off of previous movies. Because in Japan, each Spider-Man movie has made less and less and less. But in China, every, you know, every time a movie comes out, a Spider-Man movie has made more and more and more. So it'll just depend on whether they really love Spider-Man or if they're willing to take any kind of Spider-Man-esque superhero or super anti-hero in this case. So, uh, so we'll, you know, we don't know for sure but even if it made 50 million in china and 30 million in japan when all said and done that would put it just around the 650 million dollar marker um, or just under that and that would still be a huge success for them and no doubt that we are going to get a sequel for sure uh, it's just a matter of time before they announce it and i'm going to guess they're going to wait till after china because uh i think spider-man homecoming did well but it didn't do great until the china numbers came out and that was like 116 million dollars added on to its already you know total of like 600 million and it really boosted it up there and so uh, so people are like all right it's a huge success now and so i think that's what sony's waiting for they want to see how high they can get and the fact that they're already at, uh, you know over 500 million without even releasing in those markets is outstanding so big you know big congrats to sony um obviously there's things you got to work on though in the next movie so hopefully you do if you get your sequel and uh, once Ruben Fleischer is done with Zombieland 2, I'm sure he'll be getting right back to work on Venom for Sony 2, uh, for, <laughs> for Venom 2 for Sony. Uh, but uh, you guys let me know what you think of all this. You know, obviously it feels good. You know, we've been doing this show for a long time. We've had the occasional person come in and hate and stuff. But I think most people who came to hate realize, oh, all right, these guys are pretty chill. You know, like this show is pretty chill. Uh, a lot of it doesn't phase this guy. Um, so we haven't had a ton of trolls, which is nice. Uh, you know, I'm very grateful for that. But I'm sure that's not going to last for long you know as we get into joker stuff and spawn stuff and other things uh but hopefully you know we keep this kind of audience going and then, you know you guys out there who've been so great and so laid back about stuff and yeah if people hate on the movie so what like i've always said it's not for them it's for us and it looks like we're not alone because if we were this movie wouldn't have made this kind of money uh, and it is definitely far outpaced catwoman because i know a lot of people are comparing it to catwoman Catwoman did very little money compared to this, so you can't even compare it to Catwoman anymore uh, from a from a business standpoint. Uh, you, you could say if you hated the movie that much and you thought it was as bad as Catwoman, that's your opinion. Obviously, I think you're being hyperbolic, but that's still your opinion. Uh, but for me, you know, uh, I I enjoyed the movie for what it was, and Tom sold the movie on me. He did a great job playing Eddie Brock and playing Venom, and that's really what I wanted from the movie. And it looks like a lot of other people did too, and they were happy with what they got. But we can still go up from here. We can still get a better sequel and i hope we do but for now let me know what you think of all these numbers down below and thank you guys for being so patient waiting for these videos i promise i'll get some more up to you before i go in for surgery and we'll start season three probably near thanksgiving so i'm going to take a couple weeks off maybe pump out some more joker stuff maybe a spawn episode or a batman episode or two and then we'll get back to venom closer to thanksgiving and we'll go back and talk about the eddie brock stories that we missed out on the first time so thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace